All right, thank you. Yes, and it's nice to see a lot of familiar faces and names. So thank you guys all for inviting me here today. Let me get my screen shared here. All right, does everybody see the slide? All right, perfect, thank you. Uh, so I am Alex Corwin. I'm the center director at Ocali's Lifespan Transition Center. Uh, we work and focus on transition age youth, which is age 14 and up here in Ohio. Um, but we also at our center um, focus on tools and resources and training for um, youth all the way through kind of adulthood um, and the lifespan. So I'm happy to join you guys today and talk a bit about backwards planning and how it can be done as a multi-agency team um, and some considerations um, for those youth um, that are engaged with multiple systems, multiple partners uh, as they um, work through ad to adulthood. Um, so first, I'm going to uh, just briefly talk about kind of the backwards planning approach. Um, and an example that uh, myself and our my colleague here today, Chris Filler, often uses building a home, right? When you think about um, backwards planning, you kind of start with an outcome. Um, and it's really easy to envision like your dream home or trying to build a home. You don't um, kind of start with pouring the foundation and then engaging with a contractor or a developer to say like, you know, here's what we were thinking. We want, you know, this number of bedrooms and here's the foundation, the basement's already poured, um, good luck. Or you don't kind of maybe build a house or start building a house and be like, actually, we didn't really want it in this neighborhood. We wanted it somewhere else. Uh, so backwards planning and just thinking backwards is, really understanding um, the outcome, the goal that you want to achieve um, and starting with that end in mind, um, and but really having a full picture of what you want to accomplish before you even kind of get started, um, whether it's service or planning, new assessments, um, really trying to understand where we wanna go first. Uh, so another kind of real world example uh, that we use, um, especially for our transition age youth and some of our adults, who maybe are living in the family home um, is moving into your own apartment, right? We kind of want to identify that end goal. And then the next, the very next step is we need to understand where we are now. What's our baseline? What's our current situation? What's the skills that might be needed for our outcome or our end goal? So um, it could, a backwards plan could look something like this of being unsure of those apartment costs, unsure of maybe transportation, how to get to and from home, maybe to job, maybe to other locations, um, and then unsure if my skills are sufficient in order to live um, in my own apartment. Um, so the backwards plan could include steps like researching the budget required for a range of apartments in my community, maybe identifying the daily living skills that are needed to live in the community, and then also um, being under uh, understanding the transportation options and opportunities, um, public transportation, uh, maybe what I'm what's available to me through um, some of my partners or the eligibility system. Uh, for some of the services I might be eligible for. And then after we uh, complete that step, right, uh, we might explore means of increasing my income uh, to meet my budget. So maybe currently my um, monthly income is about $400, but I need $600 based off of my research in step one in order to find a, a place to live in my community. Uh, so exploring additional ways to increase my income. And then I need to develop a plan to expand my target skills. Maybe I identified that cooking, um, cleaning, and uh, maybe stranger danger are skills that are needed to live in my own apartment, but there aren't skills that I am very fluent in currently. Uh, so the next step would be selecting an apartment based on um, maybe my income as I've increased it and the transportation options or opportunities that are, I'm gonna need in order to live in my own apartment. And then uh, after some targeted skill development, maybe I still need a little bit of assistance in some areas. So I need to determine need and extent of daily assistance required in order for me to move into my own apartment. So this is kind of an idea of bad, backwards thinking um, with some steps in order to navigate what we call the gap. Um, so understanding where we wanna go and where we currently are, and then understanding that gap between um, will, will give us a really good um, idea on a roadmap, partners to engage, services and supports to sequence in order to move me from where I'm at currently to where I want to go um, with my adult life, with um, skill development even, or a larger goal or outcome. So backwards thinking, um, again, we start with kind of the end and work backwards. So we identify our goal and outcome, or we can even just 
um, identify skills that we want to achieve and the skills that are gonna be needed um, in order to achieve that goal. We look at our current skills and knowledge um, and any connections um, as far as partners. So part of that um, negotiating the gap could be um, you know, reaching out to partners or going through a referral process in order to uh, get connected with partners that could help me achieve my ultimate goal. Um, and then it's just identifying the gap because um, until we know kind of where we're going, uh, we don't, and where we are now, we won't be able to create a plan to navigate the gap. So, you know, that goal could be, um, you know, reconciliation with the family, moving back into the family home, uh, moving out of a residential facility. It could be a whole host of things, but in order for us to really understand where we want to go and where we are now, um, we, we have to have those conversations so we can develop a roadmap and a, um, to navigate the gap in between. So I'll talk a little bit about some of the steps and maybe how we can include our different partners in this process. So we begin with identifying the outcomes or the goals that we want to achieve. So we may think um, what is wanted for the youth or the family and maybe what is not wanted. And that can give us a dialogue to understand what are the outcomes or goals we're looking to achieve. Um, and it's important at this point that we share goals across systems and agency plans, right? Uh, if a youth is engaged with multiple partners, um, there's likely multiple uh, agency plans or plans of compliance, whether it's an IEP, ISP, IPE, a care plan, um, and making sure that we're sharing what our goals are across systems. Um, when we think about um, the ultimate outcome and where we are now in that gap in the middle, there could be an opportunity for us to sequence partners and services in order to meet some benchmarks or some thresholds along the way as we build towards that ultimate goal. So as a multi-system um, multi approach, making sure that we're sharing what maybe an ultimate goal is and then how partners can help with portions of it, whether it's skill development, whether it's transportation, um, whether it's uh, employment and increasing that income and how they can all play a part in helping navigate that gap to that ultimate goal. And then we need to talk about the current information that we know about the youth. So that's kind of that very first um, step in that backwards plan process. Once we have our outcome is, what kind of information do we know about the youth? Um, preferences, interests, needs, or strengths, their skills to, um, to leverage in order to help them build towards their ultimate goal or outcome. We don't wanna jump right into service. We don't wanna jump into um, new assessments or interviews. We really want to focus on what do we already know about this youth or even adult in order to help them um, identify where, where our kind of our baseline is or our current situation, different partners we're connected with. And that can be really difficult, right? Because um, how do you sum up kind of a person and where they're at in life? Where do you even start? Uh, so thinking about all the different data that's available from our partners, um, technology that's used, different therapists that might be involved, behavioral data, um, educational curriculum data, um, communication modalities, information from the family, right, on historically what has or hasn't worked, what has been tried, and understanding some of those details to see if it's something um, that maybe can or should be tried again, or something that maybe um, should be kind of left alone in, in trying a different or new approach. Um, and then if we're unsure if any of this data is current or relative or accurate, part of that plan could be focused on updating the data. So uh, maybe we want to identify a new um, communication device um, because the old one wasn't working or uh, wasn't an effective way for that person to communicate. Um, or we're unsure if um, their employability skills are where they're at because their last job trial was two or three years ago. So um, having some updated information in order to help um, really navigate that gap to see where are we with our baseline. And we really want to focus our data on can-do data, so um, truly try to avoid gathering data that highlights all the barriers and what the student can or should not be doing. We really want to focus on can-do and positive data that gives us an opportunity to build upon what the student can do, leverage their passions and their interests, um, and really help them uh, build towards that, that ultimate goal, whatever it could be through the backwards planning. And then welcoming partners in this process. And when we're trying to identify everyone's information, um, there may be past assessments, there may be um, observational data, there may be um, job trials, um, you know, different um, report summaries or service summaries. So making sure that partners are really included in this process. And that most certainly includes families and the youth themselves on um, identifying their own goals, 
identifying um, from the family's perspective what has and hasn't worked in the past and being able to um, learn a little bit more about what they are hoping to accomplish through the process. Um, so we have a tool here. Um, it's from our Employment First Transition Toolkit. Um, it is in our uh, agents, uh, I believe it's the Planning for Transition Assessment. Uh, yes, Guide for Multi-Agency Teams. And there's a list of resources here at the end that I can share. Um, but this is a really nice graphic organizer to organize all those pins. It's something that can be handed out to different partners. Um, it's a good conversation piece for a team meeting um, in order to maybe say, okay, well, actually we, we don't really know um, some of this information. And that can then be included in the backwards plan, which is we need to really identify um, what, what kind of work they wanna do or how they prefer to communicate. Um, how do they prefer to receive information? Um, so this can be a really nice tool to not only organize information, but also prompts to find more information about that youth to build that full picture. Um, and then steps three and four is kind of this process of navigating the gap, right? So what else do we need to know about the youth? So we need to determine what additional information is needed in order to plan. Um, and then what other information do we need to know about their goals? Do we need to dig a little deeper as to the, the why of their goals or what does this goal mean to them? And then we need to understand how services and supports can help navigate that gap, help with the ultimate goal. Uh, maybe there are some that they're eligible for that, but they're not connected with that partner yet. So part of that um, process could be identifying other partners to bring to the table in order to help this youth. Uh, and then the next step of, of kind of uh, navigating the gap is once we understand what questions or what other information we need to know, how are we gonna find that information? Again, it could be pulling in additional partners, um, it could be um, assessment or service driven. It could be um, some interviews with family and the youth themselves. Not every question that we have is, is likely to be answered using the same method or even by the same partner. Um, so understanding <clears throat> what each question is and then having a plan on how we're going to follow up with it, a time frame, who's responsible, all of that is going to be very important as we try to navigate that gap from, from the beginning to end of backwards plan planning. And we have a, a really um, helpful tool um, for this backwards planning process. You'll see here in column six on the right, that's that backwards plan, that ultimate goal that we're trying to accomplish. Column one is kind of our baseline or where we're at now. And then you'll see column two, three, four, and five is really that, um, that gap that we're going to navigate, those steps that we're going to take. Uh, so You'll see kind of at the top here, we, you could put your goal or outcome, um, and then our future skills or connections, different things that we're gonna need to achieve it, where we're currently at right now, and then that navigation of the gap in the middle. Um, so that's gonna include assessment, services, experiences, um, intentional instruction, um, different milestones needed, right? Um, in order to close that gap and get that youth closer or all the way to achieving their goal or outcome. <clears throat> so I showed you a couple of the uh, tools. Um, the, the last one is gonna be in that multi-agency transition planning, the per person-centered thinking and backwards planning guide. Um, the four square uh, pins graphic organizer is in the one kind of in the background there, planning for transition assessment, a guide for multi-agency teams. I mean, I've got a, a further list here and with some live links, I can make sure, I, I believe I already shared the slides with Kara, um, so you guys can have access to these and click on them. Um, but you'll see a lot of this is focused on transition planning, transition youth, transition assessment. All of these same practices and processes can be used with adults, trying to um, move adult out of an ICF and into the community, um, helping an adult identify a community employment goal, um, even trying to work on specific self-management or emotional regulation skills. Backwards planning as a process can, can be used. Um, so I don't want folks to think um, that a lot of this is just for transition age youth or teams, that it, it really can be used for, um, for adults as well. And then we have um, a new take five, which is a short video where we talk about backwards planning. Um, and you'll see some of these slides in that presentation. And then also um, we have a new age appropriate transition assessment planning tool that really focuses on the multi-agenciness of education teams coming together 
um, to plan for a youth and help them achieve what for them is post-school or transition goals. <clears throat> um, so just as kind of a, a, a quick wrap up, we, we want to make sure that we begin with kind of backwards thinking. We understand where we want to go or what that ultimate goal or outcome is, the needed skills, other connections that might be needed. And then we're understanding what the baseline is in relationship to that goal. So what of the skills we've identified, what's our, what's our current skill there? What are our current connections, other questions that we may have? And then it's helping the family um, and the team navigate that gap of beginning to build those skills, reaching out to make some important connections, and then just exploring the answers to questions in order to help move um, the youth to that goal or to um, help them uh, crystallize or narrow and add more detail to that goal. Because sometimes our goals could be to explore different things, um, explore living options, explore employment um, fields and opportunities. Uh, so it's okay if you don't have a really detailed, um, narrow goal in mind, a, a backwards planning process can be used to help narrow that process down, right, and find um, certain information about the youth and give them opportunities to explore. All right, well, I think that's it. I apologize <clears throat> if I went over, and I also seize the chat. <clears throat> 